Hello, everyone. Welcome to Colonial Classics, a food demonstration with the House of the Seven Gables, live in the Gables Cafe Kitchen. Tonight, I'm going to walk you all through making a colonial coffee ice cream from the early American cookbook, Authentic Favorites for the Modern Kitchen, which you can buy in our museum store. The House of the Seven Gables strives to be a welcoming, thriving historic site and community resource that engages people of all backgrounds in our inclusive American story. Continuing this work, ta work takes time, effort, and money. We would like to thank our members who are here tonight and invite you to become a member if you are not. We have some great programs and member events lined up this year. We have included a link for membership in the chat. We have also included a link for donations to help us cover the cost of this demonstration and to support our work as a community resource. Any amount is greatly appreciated. We encourage you to support small businesses in your community whenever you can. This, e this evening, we purchased our coffee from the Wolf Next Door, got right on Derby Street, down the street from us. I would pers personally like to thank all the people who have supported this program and got it running safely during COVID-19, especially Holly Watson, who is here with me tonight as my support group. During this demonstration, please turn off your camera and keep yourself muted. If you have a question or comment at any time during this demonstration, please type it into the chat and it'll be read aloud to me. The goal of this demonstration is to connect with everyone. So don't be afraid to engage in the chat either with me or each other. Now who's ready to get started? Hello everyone. So yes, we're making ice cream, which I'm so happy about. I've been waiting for this since I planned it back in September or whenever it was I was planning this. Um, so first off, I'd like you to put your favorite ice cream in the chat. Um, I would love to know what your favorites are. Um, and I might be able to tell you around when that came about in a way. Um, uh, ice cream has a very long history. So it seemed like we already have some in the chat. We've got chocolate chip, coffee, mint Oreo, mint, Oreo. Uh, mint chocolate chip, more coffee, cookie dough, pistachio, chocolate, chocolate brownie. Yeah, Lots amazing. of coffees. Lots of coffees, yes. I love like a coffee Oreo cookie one, like mix, so good. Um, no Parmesans? No one's favorite is Parmesan? Because apparently that was very popular back in colonial America, uh, which is something I've never heard of. And apparently it doesn't have that really cheesy flavor that you would guess it would have. It still has the creaminess of ice cream um, with just like a, a hint of that Parmesan um, flavor. And apparently it's surprisingly good. I am very tempted to try it because in order to make it, it's very simple, very similar to the technique that we're gonna to use today. So if you wanna try it, if you're brave enough to, to try that, please let me know once I send you guys the, um, I'm gonna send you the recipe for this, the coffee, colonial, the colonial coffee ice cream. I'm gonna send that tomorrow in a thank you email. So don't worry, you'll get the recipe. Uh, but seriously, if you, if you make Parmesan ice cream, please let me know. <laughs> you can, um, also, if you are more curious and want to do some more research on that Parmesan ice cream, um, there's a very helpful, there's a video online um, on YouTube um, from Townsend. He does a lot of um, videos having to do with colonial, colonial food, and he makes um, colonial Parmesan um, ice cream, which is fascinating. All right, so I'll get started with our ice cream, which is coffee, one of my all-time favorite beverages. So first off, uh, we have a makeshift double boiler because I do not have a double boiler. So I just have a heat resistant bowl and my pot right here. We're going to put two cups of cream. That's actually the milk, Never mind. Two cups of the milk and two cups of the cream. So it's gonna be the same amount of um, equal parts into there. Get that all nice and mixed up. Yeah, put that on our double boiler and then we're going to add in the coffee. And we have a fourth a pound of ground coffee grounds. Like I said, I got this from the Wolf Next Door, which is 
practically down the, down the street next door to the gables, which is really great um, and helpful. And we're gonna mix that all in. So it's gonna actually, when you mix it in, it kind of looks like it's um, cookies and cream ice cream. While I'm mixing that, I'm also gonna turn on my heat. So we are gonna mix this and heat it until the water boils, okay? So it's a fun game of, there's one, there we go. I'm going to see better. Um, of just hurry up and wait for it to boil off. But you want to make sure that all of that coffee is very well incorporated. I've tried a number of different utensils um, when trying to mix this. And I just find that a simple spoon works. Try a spatula, just doesn't do as well. Yes, there are questions. Yes, is it regular or can you use decaf? This one is regular, you can use decaf if you still want that flavor. Um, yeah, I didn't give them anything specific. The, the people down at Wolf, they know me, they know I like the caffeine. Um, so there we go. Now we have, it's very interesting. Before, like if you didn't know that this was coffee and milk, you can move this actually. No, we're good. Um, if you didn't know this was coffee and milk, um, you, you think it looked like melted cookies and cream ice cream. Uh, which is really funny. So it's my favorite ice cream. So that's mixed in. So we're gonna mix, just keep mixing that. Yeah, we're moving it over. Great. We have some, I, I went digging around our reproduction room here at the Gables and found this. Just so much fun. So this is a hand crank ice cream maker. I'm not actually going to crank it because it is broken. Um, and this is in a way, so after doing some research on how they made colonial ice cream, I definitely understand how they came up with this. Because when, when you're actually making ice cream in a colonial manner, not with um, a double boiler, you are taking a cylinder that kind of looks like a thermos and you're putting it in a barrel, filling the barrel with ice and salt to keep it below the uh, freezing temperature so that way your ice will stay cooler longer and actually give you the ice cream and then inside that cylinder that you have in the middle that's where you're putting your cream and your flavors and whatever it is you're making your ice cream then you cover it you wait about 10 minutes so that cylinder becomes cold and then you just agitate it you just shimmy it shimmy 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 for about 10 minutes and then you leave it alone for 10 minutes and then you shimmy 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 and you just keep doing that and then eventually you're going to start getting some solid so it's going to start to firm up but only on the sides so that's when you have to open up your cylinder scrape down the sides so that way there's more room for your uh, for your cream to reach the edges and become cold and then you go back to agitating um, it. and i'm not going to be able to demonstrate how to agitate this ice cream there's multiple different ways of doing that uh, I literally just reached into my fridge, shook it a bunch of times, and then put it down. <clears throat> very simple, very easy. Um, when you guys get the recipe, it only has six steps on it. And that's because I was trying to give you a lot of detail. The recipe from the book, the Early American Cookbook, has less steps than that. <laughs> um, so I kind of added some extra detail. So like making sure that it's the water that's boiling, your milk is not boiling. Um, that's not how that works. Um, so yeah, so then as techno technology innovation, that's how we get the hand crank because it's doing the exact same thing. When you turn this, it's turning the cylinder in here, which is your agitating it. So you're moving it around um, and then you open it up and scrape down the side. So you're doing the same thing. It's just you're using this motion instead of twisting this motion. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. You can still find these in antique shops. I just, I was going to buy one to show you guys and, and possibly use it. Um, I went to an antique store on, on Sunday and someone bought it just before me. You just missed it. Um, but yeah, you can go looking around and you can find one. There were a lot of butter churns out there. So if anyone's interested in making their own butter, and, and not just shaking it in a, um, at home and, and go for it. 
There's a lot out there. Are there any questions in the chat? I see, no? Okay. Oh, there's like, I see stuff there. All right. So, the origins of coffee. So, we'll move on to a different evolution of um, making coffee, but first we're going to go back a bit. We're going to go back um, to the sort of estimated origins of coffee. Now, there is not coffee, sorry, ice cream. Stop on that coffee. Um, so, the origins of ice cream. There isn't an exact date and there isn't an exact um, person who invented it. It's more of there's a lot of references of stuff that's kind of like ice cream. It goes back to about 200 BC. There are biblical references of King Solomon uh, during harvest time eating or, or drinking flavored ice slash snow that's flavored with honey and nectar um and there's other such references like that but having to do there's a, a i believe it's nero um for roman emperor nero who uh, apparently i don't know if this is true but i found it on quite a few sources referencing this sent people up the mountain to go and collect snow for him and then bring it back so he can so and then flavor it with fruit and juices so that's kind of the first references of stuff that's like um, ice cream, not nearly anything like the ice cream that we know today. Um, there is, so for bringing ice cream really into popularity, there's a myth that Marco Polo actually brought it back from the East. So when he was over in um, Asian, countries over over there when he came back he brought um, something kind of like ice cream uh, more like a, a sorbet so that evolves into ice cream that we know so that recipe from italy which is why a lot of people associate like gelato everyone says um thinks that italians do best because they did it first it's um, Use, but that's if you believe Marco Polo. Um, <laughs> that's up to you. Um, it was really expanded through the rest of Europe. This one seems to, to not be argued by Catherine de' Medici when she became queen of France. So when she moved from Italy to um, the queen of France, she um, brought with her that recipe and started sharing ice cream with the rest of the European world. I to listen because because of the boiler, I can't see if it's actually boiling. I just have to listen to it um, because you don't want this to be too too strong. What's happening right now is you're steeping, you're you're, you're making your coffee basically with a lot a lot of milk um, instead of with water, so that this is getting you that coffee flavor. So you don't want it to be in there too too long. Yeah, I'm actually going to stop because I'm starting to get a darker color than what I had previously. So that seems like it's good. Uh, someone asked, would the cream be hard to come by in colonial times? In colonial times. So, sorry, that was really hot. Well, we just removed some heat. We're going to wait for that to, to cool down a bit. Steamy. Um, not really. Um, cream is, I have to read this word because this is a, um, a, a big word. Cream is the fatty part of non homogenized, homogenized, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, dyslexic. Homogenized um, milk that floats to the top. So, um, homogenized means it's, um, that's the process of the milk that gives it the white color and um, the smooth texture. So, the milk that we know today. So, they would not have had that. So, they would have been able to just scrape the cream right off the top of their milk. Um, to be able to use. In ice cream, really, when it did become popular, it was only for wealthy people because ice, ice is very difficult. You need to have like an ice house or an ice box or somewhere where you can keep ice. Oops, someone's in the waiver. Um, so you need to be able to have room, space, money to be able to keep this, um, which is uh, someone like George Washington who apparently is recorded to in nine, in 1790 spent over $200 on ice cream during that summer. 
which is a lot, um, even by today's standards. Um, so yeah, you definitely, yeah. Um, Someone would like to know if you know when pumpkin ice cream was created. I do not know, although I actually don't think it's that far I think it's, I have no references. I'm gonna start that off, no references. But in colonial times, the most popular ice cream was fruits. You would use strawberries and stuff like that. So if someone was eating pumpkin, they could mix that in. Pumpkin's pretty easy to mix in. So not ruling it out in the realm of possibilities, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> Very important bit. Um, yeah, so they would use spices, so stuff like, chocolate, um, yeah, chocolate, um, coffee, fruits, honey, Parmesan, um, and all of these, these different things. Because really, once you make that bit, you, you, you can just add whatever you want to it, which is really great. Um, let's see, who else? Um, lost my train of thought. I was on the origins of it. Yeah, so as, yeah, because like I said, it's difficult to get the ice. Sorry, I've circled back. Uh, <laughs> difficult to have the ice and being able to preserve it. We, I actually don't know if there was an ice house on the, the House of the Seven Gables property um, or an ice box. It, a lot has changed in the basement of the House of the Seven Gables, so it's possible that maybe it could have been kept down there if they had ice. I think the Turners were wealthy enough that it is definitely within the realm of potential that they could have had ice so they could make ice cream um, but the first recording in the u.s the official account of ice cream in america is in 1744 there is a, a letter from uh, someone who had attended i believe probably a, a, a dinner at the maryland governor's house and that's where ice cream had been served and so that's how kind of maryland i, I get a lot of references in Maryland and New York, surprisingly, having to do with ice cream. So the ice cream being brought over, not ice cream, sorry, coffee brought over. I've totally lost that train of thought. Um, any questions on the origins of ice cream? Because then I can move over to the coffee because apparently that's where my brain is going right now. So anyone wants to know if there was cranberry ice cream in New England? Cranberry. I can't believe I didn't make that. That would have been so great. I have no idea, uh, but like I said, within the realm of possibility, using what what you have access to. If you're not if you don't have access to strawberries, maybe there were even current ice cream because there were currants around these parts. So there was a lot of um, difference in the um, in nature that we don't necessarily have growing wild here today. Is there another question? No. Cool. We can move on to coffee. I love coffee, guys. It's one of the reasons I chose this recipe. I really love coffee. I had two cups today. Uh, so coffee originates though. There's, there's no sort of issue with where coffee is originated. It came from Ethiopia. What is in question is how it was discovered in Ethiopia. There is a local legend. There's a legend that there was a sheep herder who was going around with his, with a sheep and his sheep ate this berry. And he found that it made them more energized and they wouldn't go to bed that night. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of children that accidentally get caffeine. Um, so he went and he told a, I a monk at his monast local monastery and they, this monk tried it and found that he was able to stay awake during his um, evening um, meditations. Yes, evening meditations. Um, and so that starts to, to spread and becomes popular and being able to be used to help keep people awake. Um, it gradually moves its way from Ethiopia to the Arabian Peninsula, when that's where it becomes cultivated and then traded all over. There were coffee houses uh, um, in the countries and nations around the Arabian Peninsula, um, and those were seen as places where people would sit and they would share ideas and they became, um, there, there was a term for it, here we go, schools of the wise. Um, that's where you would go and you would join society in that way. Um, and that's also how it became around Europe. So once coffee gets brought up into Europe, 
after they stop associating with Satan, because for a while it was associated with Satan because it was a black liquid, a black bitter liquid. And they're like, this has got to be evil. So for a long time, Europeans didn't touch the stuff. Um, and then that changed with Pope Clement the Eighth. Pope Clement the Eighth. Got to double check my Roman numerals there because um, those are those are difficult. Five, six, seven, eight. Yes, um, tried it and approved of the drink. So around the 1600s, that's when coffee houses um, start expanding, becoming popular because people are drinking coffee more. Um, in London, by the mid 1600s, there were over 300 coffee houses. It's like a Starbucks on every corner. Um, <laughs> I don't think a lot has changed in that aspect. What is interesting is when I was doing my research, coffee wasn't as popular in America. Like, yes, people drank it and everything, but not as popular as tea. Um, so coffee, there were less coffee houses, which I thought was very interesting, especially with how we've took that turn now. Um, people started drinking coffee in the morning though, instead of the other beverages and it found that helped them with their work. The revolution, wait, what? Well, and you go ahead, be Pauline. because tea was being taxed during the revolution, a lot of people stopped buying tea that was being imported from England. So folks sometimes switch to coffee in that case. Not everyone. And it still took a little while to get off the ground fully as a very popular beverage. Uh, but it was one of the ways that the shift started. Yes, revolution changed so much. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, how tea comes over. The tea was at, um, not tea. Now I've gone over to tea. <laughs> Guys, I don't know where my brain is tonight. I don't know what happened. Um, that's how coffee comes over. It was actually brought over by the Dutch to New Amsterdam, which later was renamed to New York. Um, the Dutch were really the ones to get the their hands on after um, everything, um, the plant was transported to um, Arabian Peninsula. Um, the Dutch were the first Europeans to get their hands on some of the seeds and cultivate it in other places. So they brought it, and first they tried it in India. That didn't work out. So then they brought it to Java, which is modern day Indonesia, and that worked. And from there they, they expanded. And so they became the, the first Europeans to fully cultivate and trade coffee. And they're the ones that brought it over to um, the Americas. And then later on, it's brought over again you because know, everyone's trying to grow coffee everywhere. So that's how we get coffee down in. Um, what, where was that? Martinique is the first place it was brought and then expands in Brazil. So now we have a Brazilian coffee. So that's how that sort of just expands. And so now it's one of the most high demand items other than I believe oil is what's been popping up second only to oil. Um, everyone, and so that's where it, why it's so cultivated everywhere. Someone said that they heard a version of the legend of the sheep were reported to start dancing after dancing eating the coffee. Sheep. Yes, I saw that somewhere. There was a fun cartoon of sheep dancing, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> so yes, that that uh, yeah. dancing sheep. Not one of that connected to counting the sheep jumping. Over. You're not sleeping, so never mind. All right, let's see. Is that that's cooled down? I'm gonna move this over here. And we see an issue. We have lots of coffee grounds. You don't want to have coffee grounds in your house. So I'm going to take some cheesecloth. Do not use a, a strainer. Um, that doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it multiple different times and it just didn't work. I found that cheesecloth works. Also, you can use a coffee filter coffee grounds, coffee filter, that works. Um, there's also, you can purchase your own individual tea bags, which I didn't know exist. They're actually pretty cool. They're just itty bitty tea bags that you can fill yourself. And you can use that to, to steep in there and you cook it with that. So I'm double layering my cheese cloth because I am very nervous about getting coffee grounds in my ice cream because that's not a fun texture. 
Someone would like to know if the type of coffee bean matters when making ice cream. Oh, that's perfect. Um, type of coffee bean? No, it does not. Because you're just you're you're making your own ice cream. Um, it's whatever flavor you want. So if you like an Ethiopian blend, go with that. If you prefer more of, let me put these over. Uh, if you want the Brazilian coffee, you can go with that as well. Um, if you want it to have more fruity coffee aroma, um, that would be, that sounds really nice. I actually don't know what kind of coffee this was. They, they're just like, Kaylee needs coffee, give it to her. Um, <laughs> they just grab something out of their bag. Um, uh, so yeah, because some of them have some like fruity notes to them, which I think would be really nice. I'm just gonna pour that in there. Oh, that's a good coffee smell. Yeah, that, that just came whoosh right up in my face. Uh, <laughs> that was pleasant. And then just make sure you get all of your corners. This is why you want it to be colder. There we go. And wear an apron. Now it's time for sugar because what's ice cream without some nice sugar? <laughs> like a whole cup of sugar. Uh, yay. So make sure that you really blend that in. Um, I tried using an actual hand electric mixer. It went everywhere, just like my boyfriend said it would, but I didn't listen to him. Um, and then I got coffee milk all over my pants. So, so I recommend using whisk and <laughs> just doing it by hand. Yeah, so we have a night, we have a darker color. And that's good. It smells like my coffee in the morning. It's great. So then we make sure to mix that in. And that's it for combining. That's your ingredients. That's that's all you need. All right. And so now I'm just going to pour it in some sort of container that you can shake um, without spilling this. So I found that. So I actually made half the recipe. I told you what the full recipe was, but I only made half the recipe because um, there's, there's only so much room I have in my carry on um, my lunchbox. So this one, <laughs> I can't get everything in my lunchbox. I don't have much space. Um, so this is a 500 milliliter. And this fits oh so perfectly. To clarify, it's 500 milliliter container for half a recipe. For half a recipe, yes. But folks will receive the full batch recipe tomorrow. Yes. It is a very easy recipe to have, which is why I did it, because I'm bad at math. Um, so what you do now is you have your um, very, very liquidy ice cream. So you put that into the fridge. I recommend putting in the, the freezer, not the fridge. You won't get ice cream in the fridge. Um, put it in the freezer for maybe about 20 minutes. Um, so that way the container gets cold. And then go in there and shake it. I do like brown circles, up, down, shake. Do that for like a minute. And then don't touch it for about 10 minutes. So I started doing 10, 10 minute intervals. Um, that involved a lot of getting up. Um, and stopping what I was doing. <laughs> um, so I started doing 20 minutes. It still worked. Um, and it, it was really great. And I was very satisfied um, because it did, I told you, it creates that sort of layer on the outside. And it created the layer. I was so excited. I was running around the apartment. I'm like, look, I have firm ice cream. Um, so then you just take something like a little, little spatula and just scrape down the sides and then shake it again and then put it back in the fridge, uh, freezer um, until it's set. So if you do not, so the, the double boiler is just because of the coffee portion. Okay, so if you're not doing something that involves brewing in the flavor, you can just put it in, I'm gonna show you guys. You can just put it in something like this and shake in your freezer like I do 
or there are a number of different modern ways that you can do it. Like if you don't want to buy an 1800s um, coffee hand crank, um, a hand crank ice cream maker. Um, I know we'd all want to have one, um, but they're very expensive um, to buy new. Um, so they have these handy dandy new things, which I'm pretty sure are about 30 bucks. Um, this is my coworkers um, and it works very, Similarly, so you open it, you open it up, and there's your cylinder right there. And then you would pour in all, all of your, your creams and everything, and then make sure that's good and tight. Flip it over, open up the other end. It's very tough to open for a reason because with this one, this is supposed to be a game. Supposed to throw it around. Um, and on this end, you're putting your ice and salt in there. And then you can make a fun little game of it. So my, my coworker has this and she plays it with her family. And you just roll it around the table like that. Shake it up. Shake it up just like that. Um, you can also do this with plastic baggies. It's the same principle. This thing has to open. I can figure out which way I'm rotating. There we go. Um, so with the like inner layer and then the outer, the inner shell, outer shell kind of thing. So you have a big plastic bag and that's what you fill with the ice and um, ice and salt. And then you have your cream and everything. I recommend double bagging your cream and everything and then put it in there and then you can just shake, 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 shake. Um, with, with that, definitely double bag the cream and sugar mixture and duct tape it shut. I have done this method before and the ice cream does tend to get a little bit salty. Um, if you really want a good homemade um, one, if anyone still gets um, coffee cans or like plastic coffee cans, you can do it with a smaller and then larger coffee can and duct tape those shut and you tend to get a little bit less salt in your ice cream mixture and you can kick the cans around and turn it into soccer, which is very fun. Uh, yes, I was going, so this, the, this premise comes from kick the can, the game with the, cause it, like it's, it's the same thing, you your can on the inside and then this purple thing is technically the can on the outside. Um, and you just kick it around, um, recommended to kick it around for like 15, 30 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes and then scrape down the edges and then kick it around again. Um, this one takes about 20 minutes based on the video I saw. Not really sure. I've never tried it. We're going to try it probably at our next uh, work gathering, um, kicking it around the lawn um, once it gets nice out. So hopefully that'll work. Is there a question? Yes. Uh, can you put other spice or flavoring like vanilla or maybe Bailey's? Yes. Uh, and then someone asked, because Bailey's is alcoholic, would it prevent it from freezing properly? Mm -hmm. Freezing properly. I still feel like it will freeze because there's some frozen Bailey's alcohol, like drinks, I believe. Um, so your texture is probably gonna be a little bit soupier, but I definitely feel like you'd be able to, to get it um, to, to work. And, and then, have a new project. yeah. Somebody said that they do, um, the plastic bag one in science for the elementary school kids. Yay! I've never been able to do that part successfully, um, probably because my friends and I were impatient high schoolers um, who didn't know what we were doing. This was actually my first time making ice cream, which was very exciting for me. So I felt like a child. Um, so um, we tried, but we didn't realize how long it was going to take us to, to shake it. Um, we gave up. <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to have to try it again now that I'm an adult and hopefully um, have more patience. Hopefully. Um, any other questions on there? No questions no question. so far. Let's see. Can I try this? So, yes, the more you agitate and shake it, um, it's going to be creamier because um, those crystals. The, the reason it becomes, yeah, yeah. So this one I agitated for, let's see, there we go. Uh, this one has a bit of a crystal um, 
texture to it when you're eating it. Yeah, so it kind of squishes, scrunches, more like scrunches instead of squishes. Um, and to be fair, it's been in the refrigerator, not the freezer for about half an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so has a good flavor. Um, probably could use more sugar, but then I think a lot of things could use more sugar. Um, <laughs> But the more that you shake it, the creamier it's going to be because it's not going to have time to form those crystals as fast. And so that's where you get the creamier ice cream. So I had agitated this one for about three hours and then I had to go to bed. Um, so if you're going to do this and you want to be able to have nice creamy ice cream, nice creamy ice cream, um, do it earlier in the day and not at seven o'clock at night. Uh, so I would like to know, suppose you wanted to create a low sugar, low salt, low fat version of coffee ice cream. Well, there's no salt in it. So you're already on a great track. Low, what were the lows? Sugar, low fat. fat. Cream is fat. So um, no sugar. You can just use a sugar substitute or you don't even have to put sugar in it. Yeah, you got me on the fat part though, unfortunately, um, because since, like I said, cream is literally the fat off of the top of milk, um, and that's sort of what makes creamy. I would recommend a sorbet instead, because sorbet is ice-based instead of dairy-based, and so you're taking that out, um, and that has, you would be able to use that really with a lot of um, tart flavors, so you, you use that for um, adding fruits. And that's a really good one. That's probably one of the other things I'm gonna try and make this, this summer is making sorbet. Um, the difference between sorbet, sherbet, and ice cream is that sorbet is ice-based. Sherbet is a, sort of in between the two. It has like those tartish kind of flavors that the sorbet has, but it does have some dairy um, in there. And then with ice cream, that's completely dairy-based and you can add different flavors. Uh, someone asked if you could substitute some skim milk or some low fat half and half. I used 1% for this one. Um, even though I'm pretty sure they recommend you use whole milk, so that way it gives you more of that whole creaminess. Um, but yeah, I think you can, you can substitute the milk and that's really not gonna make much of a difference as far as I know. Yeah, I think it's just going to be less creamy. Mm. So I think you sacrifice a little bit of texture and taste potentially, but I think it's physically possible to make with those substitutions. I need some chocolate syrup for this. Like that says what my, my mouth is craving with this. Sorry, I'm just enjoying this. It's, it's kind of fudgy. Hmm. I didn't, I've been waiting to eat this all day, guys. I came into work and I had to put it in the freezer and I had to wait all day to eat this. I know I'm eating it in your face, but it's been a long day. <laughs> I have to say my favorite way to eat coffee ice cream is in a coffee milkshake where they use coffee syrup. That's how I test if it's a good ice cream place or not. Very nice. You guys asked me about the cream, but you didn't ask me where you probably know where the milk is coming from. It's coming from the cows that, because um, there wasn't really, there wasn't any dairy beforehand. The um, Native Americans didn't eat dairy or drink dairy. Um, so this is wholly a, a, a colonized thing over here that we utilize. Any other questions? I don't know if I have any other tidbits for you guys. I told you about all this, the hand crank. I need to get myself one of these. Um, <laughs> and we're definitely, I've already talked to uh, the director and told her that we, I would like to use this during one of our, our work gatherings to make ice cream for everyone. So I think that would be a great team building activity. Uh, we have a question. Is there a difference between coffee and mocha ice cream? Does mocha have chocolate mocha in it? Mocha has chocolate, yeah. So coffee is just the straight coffee. So I want this to be a mocha. I'm a mocha person. Um, so yeah, it has, mocha has chocolate. All good, all right. So this is actually sadly the last colonial classic um, that we have, but do not worry. We have plenty of other things coming up. So 
the next event that we have, we have a virtual lecture coming up for Women's History Day on March 27th. We have one of our board members is going to be um, doing a lecture, Women of the Gables. So log in for that. You can register on our website for our calendar. We also in March have our first in-person um, community conversation on the 28th. Yes, I remember it was on the 28th. Um, I unfortunately don't know the 6 to 8 p.m. That's 6 to 8 p.m. Great. The other, the lecture is also at 6 o'clock. Um, probably not going till 8. And keep your eye out for more events. Perhaps I'm, I'm working on setting up a Miss Emerton tea party for her birthday in April. So if you're a member, keep an eye on those newsletters, those e newses. Um, and if you're not, I recommend becoming a member um, so you get those e newses. Um, or you can check on our website, looking back on that calendar. You can also sign up to receive our e newsletter on our website. You do not have to be a member, but members get an extra special behind the scenes sneak peek in our quarterly print newsletters. Yes. Oh, and very important bit, we're open, guys. <laughs> Today was the second day that we've been open in 2022. Um, we have tickets available um, for all of March. Members right now can purchase tickets for April. Um, everyone else can purchase tickets for April on uh, March 4th. So very excited to see you guys in person. Um, we've got so folks in the comments celebrating with us. Woo! Yay! <laughs> It's a good time. All right, so thank you guys so much. Like I said, I'm gonna send out that email uh, with some helpful links so that way you guys can um, register for these upcoming programs. And I'm gonna go finish my ice cream. You guys have a good night. <laughs>